So before we continue, I want to set up an environment variable. So let's go back to the application and let's go over to the service. So you can see in the service here, I'm repeating this URL two times here. So I'm using the same URL in the two different functions. So it would be a good idea if we can just set a variable for this and then we can use that variable instead. So let's go ahead over to the tablet class and let's call this API uh, URL. And then we're going to set this equal to this URL right down there. So I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this and paste it here. I'm going to go ahead and remove this user. I just want to have the base URL here. A better way to do this is to set this as an environment variable. Now this would work. This would work fine. But the thing is, if we set it as an environment variable, then we can differentiate between a development environment and a production environment. So if we go to the uh, let's go to the environment. So you can see we have an environment folder here. And if you expand that folder, you can see we have one for production. So environment.prod.cs. So we can just copy this whole URL and let's just go over to the environment. The one that's not for production because we're not in production yet. And we're just going to pass it in here. So we're going to say API URL and pass this in here. So this is going to represent the base URL for this API. So now we can just close this and collapse this back in. So we can just reach to the environment and then set this up. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and call the environment. You can see it's coming up here and then get the API URL. Even though this is coming from the environment itself, so the one that we just set and not from the production, whenever we build this application and then we do like ng build to build this application, then it's going to look into this prod. So whatever is in prod, then that's what it's going to look. So what we can do here, we can just copy the same API URL and then we can just go to the production and then here we just paste it. And then this URL would be something like the real URL, like the production URL. So we can say like production, uh, that's something, right? So this is not a valid URL, but I'm just showing you, you would give them the same name. So what would happen is whenever you're done building this application and testing it and you want to deploy it, so you have to run ng build, then the Angular CLI is going to look into this application and it will set this value to the environment variable that is in production and not the one that is um, in development here. We can just close those things now. And now we have our environment variable. So here we can just use this URL. So I'm just going to go here and just select both of them and then just pass in this API URL. And we have to put a dollar sign in front of this just like that. And then we know that this doesn't end. So if we go back into it, you see that this is just the base URL. Okay. We could have named this base URL. And then here we know we have to pass in slash user. So I can just slash users to get all the users. And then here again, I can just pass in slash users slash one. So this is how you use your, env I mean, that's just an example of how you can use the environment that you see here um, so that you can use different properties depending on what you're doing or what phase you're in, either if you're in development or if you're in production. So now if we go back to the application, you can see that everything is running exactly like before. Okay, so we got the 10 users and then that one user that we fetch.